Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm back with another Copic Speed Paint and I need to do these more often. It's one of those things where I wanna experiment with so many different mediums and then when I come back to Copics, I'm like, why did I ever leave? Like, why? I just, I mean, it's fun to experiment, but I feel like I just don't do enough Copic work on this channel. So I'm gonna try to do more. I'm gonna try to do more. I'm saying it here so that you guys can hold me accountable. I'm still gonna have a variety of videos, but I need to do more Copic speed paints or just Copic work in general. Yeah. Anyway, so today I'm drawing a witchy old lady and she's shopping. Initially, it wasn't going to be a witchy lady and it wasn't going to be an old lady. I was just doodling. I was like, oh, maybe someone's shopping. Then I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool if they were shopping for witchy things. Then I decided to do an older woman because I was actually doing some studies from this Andrew Loomis book. I got three of his books recently and I was doing some studies out of one of them and one of the pages had a lot of older men in it and then on a future page there was actually an older lady too and I just I wanted to draw an older lady I guess and because so many of the studies I did from the one page were of all those men I was like let's draw an old lady now and so this is what I came up with and if you see me glance down it's because I have the video rolling below me so I can kind of give commentary on it as it goes so yeah, sketching as usual with my Prismacolor Call Erase pencils and boy do I never want to draw a shopping cart ever again. In pencil I just kept the shopping cart sketch pretty loose and didn't add most of the detail until I went to ink and for some reason I decided to do one of those metal bar shopping carts. Oof. <laughs> with all the sides overlapping and being see-through it's so confusing and I had a reference image which helped a lot but it's it just gets messy, I guess. And a lot of the bars in the back, I didn't even fully ink and I just lightly drew them in with pencil because I didn't want it to look too messy. And also I realized that it would have been maybe neater if it was something more wooden or just kind of old timey for the shopping cart, just something different that would fit into the witchy world. But in my mind, I wanted it to be like modern day witch, I guess, which is why my mind went to regular shopping cart. And so, She's going to the supermarket picking up stuff she can use to make potions and things out of, or you can even buy pre-made stuff. Kind of like today in the stores, it's like, I can make a lasagna or I can just go grab one out of the frozen food aisle and cook it, you know? So that was kind of my idea is there's pre-made potions and things too nowadays. And this old lady witch is just shopping. Like One thing that went through my head is maybe she's shopping for one of her grandchildren or multiples of them. I don't know. She's just shopping for things. I don't know why she would shop for her grandchildren at a grocery store unless it was like a pre-made potion thing. I don't know. Who knows what witches shop for? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, then I inked it onto my cardstock with a blue Copic multi-liner just because I knew I was going to be using blues, purples, and pinks for this, which is kind of one of my go-to color combos. And so I wanted it to be blue. Black would have worked nicely too for this type of drawing, but I just, I just feel like going with blue, it's a little less Ah, a little less poppy than black, but I don't know. I, I was a bit torn, but ultimately I decided to go with the blue, but I only inked her and I left the background mostly in pencil just so it wouldn't compete with her so much because it's a shelf of grocery items behind her. It's very busy. And so I didn't want it to detract from her too much. So I just did the background in pencil. So it's a little more subtle and I tried to make the colors a little soft as well. Now, for her body, she has a huge head. Okay, I, I know this, I know her head's huge. That was mostly a mistake um, because like, sure, you could draw a character with a big head, that can be intentional, but I didn't intentionally do that. <laughs> uh, I drew her body, but then I was kind of making it wider. I was like, oh, she's not gonna be super skinny or anything. Cause again, my reference image, there's this young skinny woman holding onto the shopping cart with both hands and I was like, well, Mine's not gonna look like that. So I was making her kind of wider. I wanted her to not really have a neck so that she looks hunched. And then I start drawing her head in and then I was like, this is a huge head, especially when you compare it to her hands. And I was like, oh well, I guess it's a huge head later. <laughs> also with the shopping cart, don't look too closely at it. I mean, now that I'm mentioning it, you probably will, but a lot of the bars are not properly placed. Like there are areas where I accidentally made lines cross that I shouldn't have or I drew the lines too low on the shopping cart. Instead of making the vertical lines end where the bottom of the main basket part is, I drew them going down further and I was like, no, that's where the underside of the cart is. Like, why, Bailey? And then also all the 
ends of the bars just magically disappear because like for example where she's holding that's a thick part and then it has the thick bars going down and then on the front side of the cart like closest to us the bars going horizontally hide behind that one but then on the other side of the cart they're also hiding but if we're seeing the other side of that cart we should see the bars in front like I don't know it's a little inconsistent and messy and I tried using a white gel pen to fix a lot of these mistakes but like it, it looks okay when you initially glance at it but just don't look too closely also what was nice about the reference is one thing that really threw me off as I was drawing this when I was drawing the vertical bars on the cart the ones on the side closest to us they're kind of leaning back and then they go straight and then behind it they I feel like they were leaning more like they looked like they were at a different angle on the other side of the cart and if I wasn't using reference I probably would have drawn them at the exact same angle because it's like oh it's both sides of the cart are the same like the line should be the same, but no, because of the perspective, the front side is more like this and the back side's more angled. And so like, I'm just looking at the reference like, oh my God, I never would have thought of that. It's like another reason why reference is really good, especially for something you haven't really drawn before because you think you know what something should look like, but you don't necessarily know. So, okay, now I'm more farther into the coloring. For the witch, I wanted there to be a bit of contrast between her and the background, but I didn't want the background to be all dark and she's all light or vice versa. So I decided to make her cape dark because the look of dark capes is just cool. I don't know, all capes are cool. <laughs> but I thought that'd be a nice way to separate her from the background because you see it over her shoulders and you see it a bit behind her and it acts like an outline of sorts that makes her pop off the background. So that's one of the reasons I did that. And then the potion is dark also, so it stands out. And then the flowers in her hair, they're light now, but at the end of the video, I made them dark just for more contrast because I felt like you couldn't see her hair piece very well. It just blended in with her hair. So I made it a bit darker just for the contrast. Now about the potion bottle though, when I was coloring in the background, the sticks that are behind the potion bottle, I know we're not quite there yet. I colored them kind of dark. And then I realized that was kind of a dumb move because it blends in with the potion bottle a bit and also the background just should stay somewhat soft so that it doesn't compete with her too much i don't know that was my thought anyway and then all of a sudden i drew these sticks really dark and i was like what are you doing bales what are you doing also the level of liquid in the potion lines up with the top of one of the bundles of sticks and so it's kind of like an, an ellipse and the bottom part of the ellipse lines up with the sticks and the top part lines up almost with the horizontal line of the shelf and I was like no because it's pretty much a tangent so I'm like eh, that's kind of one thing you want to avoid is when two objects mysteriously just line up at the same point because it looks weird visually especially since the potion was dark and the sticks were dark so what I ended up doing was taking a lighter color and trying to remove like just lighten up the darkness of the sticks that's what the Copic colorless blender is really handy for. Although I couldn't find mine. I don't know where it is. It just wasn't there. Normally it's in the little pocket with all my black markers. So I just used a light cool gray. I think it was cool gray double zero or something like that. And I just scrubbed away at the sticks to try to lighten them a little bit. Ideally they'd be a little bit lighter, but I did my best. And then I think it helped when I did stuff with white gel pen, I outlined the bottle a little bit on the inside just because I wanted the liquid to kind of stand out and it helped separate it from the sticks a little bit. But I didn't use too many white highlights in this because I didn't want it to have that type of look. I just added highlights in the potion mainly. I started adding highlights to her ruffles on her sleeves and then I changed my mind. And you can soften them, soften them a bit if you scrape them, if you're using a white gel pen and you want the edge to blend in or you just kind of change your mind, just take your nail and scrape it. That really helps. Cause usually I'll sometimes do stuff in, in the gel pen and then I'll color over it with Copics and the color will look really light and you'll still see the line, but it just softens it a little bit. So coloring over with Copics and scraping it helps make it not so noticeable. And then I of course added highlights to her jewelry. So there's that gemstone right here and then she has the earring showing. So I added highlights there too, but other than that, I didn't highlight anything, especially not in the background. The background was tempting, but I was like, no, because that's just gonna draw attention to it. Again, I want the background to be soft and subtle. So I just left that as it is. And I would say my favorite part about the background is probably that row of brown paper bags at the top. I just like the way it looks. I like the way the purple shadows look on it. I like just the shading in general. I don't know. I just, I think those turned out pretty nice. And then 
The potion bottles, I realized I probably should have left one potion bottle missing from the shelf because she's holding one. So I'm like, where did she grab it from? And I was like, well, maybe she just grabbed it from like where she's standing. You know, she's kind of blocking part of the shelf. Maybe she grabbed it from there and like took a step forward. And, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things I didn't think of until later. So, oh well. And then for the shopping cart, Kiki, she's making noises. Brother, you're chirping. Do you see a birdie? Anyway, the shopping cart, <laughs> I just did some gray lines on it without any sort of blending because it's metallic. So I would do some light gray, like let's say here's a vertical bar, just do like a light gray line down it. And then I'll take a dark gray and just add the skinny line, that sort of thing. And then I went and added some highlights in white just to make it look a little shiny. But that is the witch picture. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you want to see more Copic speed paints for me because I think I need to do more. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.